Well, the RTX 50 series could be the biggest GPU leap ever. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. So rumors are swirling online about the RTX 40 Super Series, which at this point is all but confirmed, but with the RTX 50 Series set to launch potentially less than a year afterwards, many people are starting to get even more hyped about those GPUs, and it's no wonder why, because fellas, these graphics cards are looking absolutely wild. Now, I decided to do an update on the RTX 50 series today because recently Nvidia showed off their next generation Blackwell GPUs and the performance increase is insane. I mean, just take a look at this chart here, guys. You can see we're talking about double or potentially even more than double the performance of their current graphics cards. Now, this isn't necessarily what I would expect to see out of the gaming GPU variants of the Blackwell architecture. However, I do think it's important to keep these performance numbers in mind when discussing the RTX. X50 series, as often data center variants can inform us on the direction NVIDIA wants to go with their GPUs as a whole, and looking at the graph it's easy to see that that direction is more AI performance and lots of it. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the gaming performance increase isn't going to be that great, far from it. In fact, if we go ahead and take a look at some charts that I've been throwing together guys, based on some leaked information from people such as Comp 7 Kimi, Red Gaming Tech, and many others I will have linked in the description below, I think you're going to see that these GPUs are going to be bringing a ton more performance in basically everything that you would want. And starting off with just the specs here, looking at the RTX 5090, there's a couple of different options on the table based on different nodes from TSMC, as we're not 100% sure which node they're going for yet, but taking a look at the first and least impressive version that they could make, this alone is already a massive performance increase. Now, this would be based off of the TSMC N4X node. Now, this node is an improvement upon the current N4 node that they're using on the RTX 4090, and this node alone would likely have around 162 SMs for 20,736 shaders, a boost clock of around 2.8 gigahertz, 24 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory on a 384-bit bus, a memory bandwidth of 1,536 gigabytes per second, cache of around 108 megabytes, and a TDP of 450 watts. Now that N4X node is important to keep in mind as that would actually shave the cost down significantly at the cost of power. So they would have to use those architectural gains to offset any increases keeping it at that 450 watts, but that's just the most anemic version they could create. In fact, they could create a GPU on the N3 node, which would be a further improvement over N4X and N4. And this is what a lot of leakers such as Cop87 Kimi seem to believe is gonna be the most likely outcome. And if that is the outcome, we're likely talking about a GPU with around 192 SMs for 24,576 CUDA cores, a similar 2.8 gigahertz likely clock, 24 gigabytes of G7 at 32 gigabits per second on a 384-bit bus, once again for that same 1,536 gigabytes per second. However, it would likely have more cache at around 128 megabytes and a TDP of around 400 watts, as between the more efficient node and new architecture would likely not only be significantly faster, but also more power efficient. But wait, it could actually get even more performant. In fact, they could use an N3 node and max it out. Instead of cutting down the GPU, we could be talking about a GPU that has around 216 SMs or possibly even more. But even if we're going to be conservative and say 216 SMs, that's 27,648 shaders. And they would likely be able to run it at around 2.9 gigahertz if they wanted to increase that power just a little bit. And according to Cop 7 Kimi, they are actually testing out a 512 bit variant of this GPU, which means that on GDDR7, we're talking about 32 gigabytes of RAM at over two terabytes a second of memory bandwidth. And you would also be getting around likely 144 megabytes of L2 cache and at a similar TDP of around 450 watts, this would be an absolute monster. But how much of a monster would these GPUs be? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the performance breakdown. Now, it's very likely that NVIDIA will be seeing an IPC increase with these GPUs, as I've heard from countless different people that yes, they are gonna be improving their arc 
architecture significantly with the RTX 50 series. And if that is the case, let's be conservative and say it's a 10% increase. Well, if we go ahead and take a look at the first option on the N4X node, we're talking about, you know, 10% increase from my PC times a 27% core increase times 11% higher clock speeds, and you also get the memory and cache performance increases as well, and we're talking about a GPU that could be around 55% higher performance than the current RTX 4090, and the price would likely be between 1.5 to 1.6K, as this node would technically not be bleeding edge and be significantly cheaper, leading to definitely no price increases and with a release date likely between quarter three and quarter four of 2024 it's actually likely that this card could be released in not that long at least not that long after the super series launches but it's starting to sound like guys that the n3 node is more likely and if that is the case taking a look at the other options starting out with the smaller n3 RTX 5090, you take a 10% IPC increase times a 50% core increase times the 11% higher clocks, and we're talking about a GPU that could be in the range of around 1.83 times the performance of an RTX 4090, and with a price likely between 1.6 to 1.8K, yes, there could be a price increase, but probably not, and if so, probably also not by very much either. And also with the release date between quarter four of 2024 and quarter one of 2025, it's also possible that we could be talking about less than a year from the RTX 40 Super Series. But what about the RTX 50 Series Titan? This one is insane. So if we take into account, once again, the 10% IPC uplift it's likely to see times 69% more cores and 15% higher clocks, we're actually talking about a GPU that could be over two times the performance of the RTX 4090, but it's not gonna come cheap. A GPU like this would likely cost in excess of $2,000 and probably wouldn't be releasing until quarter four of 2024 and quarter one of 2025 once again. So realistically guys, which of these three is the most likely? And I do think it has to be option two. I think lower power draw at significantly higher performance and not increasing the price also significantly is the most sensible option. And if that does turn out to be the case, the actual real world performance that we're talking about here, guys, is likely gonna be in terms of gaming performance around 60% higher. And in terms of ray tracing performance, well, I have been hearing from many people that the ray tracing cores will be getting a significant increase in terms of performance. I've heard things as high as like 50% higher performance. I don't know if that's actually realistic, but let's say they get somewhere around like 20, maybe 30% more performance per the RT cores. Well, right off the bat, you're also getting 50% more RT cores. Some simple math puts you at, well, around two times the ray tracing performance in the RTX 5090 versus the RTX 4090. So 60% higher gaming performance and double the ray tracing performance. We're talking about a card that could not only be playing games at 8K thanks to the massive increase in gaming performance and memory bandwidth, but now we finally could be looking at the first GPU from NVIDIA that can really truly run path tracing at high quality levels and still be playable. So this is gonna be a very exciting moment for the GPU industry as a whole. I cannot wait to see more information about the RTX 50 series. I'll definitely be sure to let you guys know if things change, if specs start to look any different, or if they get even higher performance, definitely be subscribed so I can update you guys on that. And of course, next we'll be talking about the RTX 40 Super Series as there is a ton of information coming out about new NVIDIA GPUs. But yeah, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RTX 50 Series could really be over double the performance of the RTX 40 series, or do you think that's just way too high? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.